The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. And there are implementations. 2 Corinthians one twenty. All the promises of God are yea in Him, and amen in Him. All the promises, not some promises, not one promise, but many promises that God had promised. Will, bring, will come to pass in our lives if we stand on them and claim them and believe the Word of God. And the word promise, uh, last week I told you from the dictionary, one of the meanings that I really liked, it's something that has the effect of an express assurance. indication of what may, may be expected. The promise is something that God has made, the promise in the, in the Word. Now, I'm not talking about when people make promises to you, they can break them, the circumstances make them up, and they can't keep them. Uh, but God doesn't move by circumstances. He moved, moves by Himself because he's God. He's the force above all forces. And he's God. He's almighty. He's the mighty almighty. Amen. And whatever he says will come to pass. Whatever he, whenever he tells us that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Um, and you can bet your life on that. In fact, at the, at the end of the verse, uh, 2 Corinthians one twenty uh, says what? That basically um, all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, Amen. Now, listen, promise means that God has spoken His Word and it's going to come to pass. That's the assurance we have. So, therefore, the people were told in the Old Testament every time God said something, promised something, they were saying, Amen. Now, uh, I want to know what the word amen. Don't you want to know what the word amen means? I, I mean, I went back to the Hebrew and labored all day long, all night long to find out what amen means. Don't you want to know? Or shall we skip it? No. In Him, the promises of God, in Him, in Jesus, are yea, and in Him are Amen. So, the word Amen occurs 78 times in 72 verses in the King James Version. And that goes from Numbers chapter 5 through 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 21. Amen, amen. I heard the preacher say when he preached, he filled up the rest of his speech by saying amen, 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 and amen. <laughs> well, I said, what's the matter with this guy? Can't he just give us something else besides saying amen? But now I understand where he was coming from because it does mean something. And this is why we're studying it this morning. Uh, the Strong's Concordance renders the word amen to mean 
verily, truly, amen, so be it. Translates, the King James translates Strong's number H539 in the following manner. The word believe for amen. The, the root word aman or amen. It, it comes from the word ma'min, amuna, which means faithfulness, faithful. And when God makes a promise, it's a faithful saying. He'll never break his promise. He'll always come to pass. He'll always bring it to pass. He'll always stand behind his word to fulfill it. So that's why we use the word amen. Amen means verily, truly, so be it. So translated 44 times as the word believe. Now when you say amen, that means you believe whatever was said before. If you're saying amen to the promises of God, you believe the promises of God. Otherwise, you should not be saying amen. Okay? And it's mentioned 44 times in the Bible, translated believe. It's also translated one time assurance. 20 times faithful. 11 times, sure, when you say amen, sure. Seven times, established. Five times, trust. When I say amen, I mean, I'm saying I trust. Okay? Three times, verified. Two times, steadfast. Two times, continuous, continuance. Two times, translated, father. Now you figure that out. Because when a father says something, he can be trusted. That's the whole idea. Four times, bring up. Two times nurse. Uh, for one time be nursed. One time surely be. One time stand fast. Amen. Surely. Of a truth. Verily. For sure. Bet your boots. I just added that one. Forgive me, Lord. Now, how about the word yea in 2 Corinthians 1.20? All the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen. So, I wanted to find out what yea means. Is that okay? Yeah. Got to find out. I mean, I, w I want to find out what yes and what no means and what, you know, uh, it all has a meaning. What does the word milk mean? You know, you can imagine. Coffee. All right? So, the word yea. Okay, the King James Strong's G3483, the numbers, if you have a uh, strong concordance, you will find it uh, in the following manner. And the word, like in the Greek, it's N-A-I, translated 
Yea. 23 times. Yea. Five times, even so. Even so. Three times, yes. One time, truth. One time, verily. And one time, surely. Not surely, surely. So, uh, it sounds to me like yea and amen almost have the same meaning. Yes, or amen, or truly, truly, or there's faithfulness in what God says. That's for sure is another meaning. But see, the, the word yes and amen uh, almost mean the same. That's why when this uh, brother used to say amen, 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 and amen, I said, man, I shouldn't have been critical about that <laughs> because he's emphasizing God said it, that's true, that's for sure, that's truly, that's verily. Amen, 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 and amen. Amen? Amen. That's the truth. <laughs> so we're saying, surely, so be it. The truth, and nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So we're going to look at one promise. So I mean, we're going to conclude that in Second Corinthians one twenty, all the promises of God in Him, in Christ, are yes and amen. They're all true. They're all good. They're good for us. Whatever God promised in the Word. They, these promises are ours. That's for sure. That's why we say amen. Okay, the reply of the people is amen. So be it. Truthfully. For sure. Verily. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. God said it. I believe it. As another word. The word amen comes from the word amen Amona, faithfulness and faith. Believe. Amen. That means I believe it. Let it be so. I believe it. For sure. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. Isn't that exciting? When you say the word amen, you now you begin to understand and, and realize that you're saying you agree. I agree. I concur. I, I, I believe it's true. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. So let's look at one promise. Okay, now last week we said that God promised His Son, Jesus, came to this world because of God's promise. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The promise began in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when God provided a way of salvation for humankind. When he said that the seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head, and the seed of the woman is Christ. And he came to crush the serpent's head, meaning <coughs> Satan and his seed, Antichrist, and the spirit of Antichrist. So Isaiah 9, 6. I like the way it sounds. It's a holiday scripture. It's a true scripture. You could say amen to this 
promise? You can say, so be it. You can say, for sure. You can say, truly. You could say, verily. You could say, yea. And you could say, amen. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And let me be honest with you, I don't like this translation into the King James. So, I was looking up some other translations to fit and agree with what I believe the Hebrew is saying. The Hebrew language, that's the original, that's the most authorized, more authorized than the King James Version. Amen. If, it's, if anything is authorized, it's the original language. The Bible was not written in English, folks. It was written in Hebrew. So, I looked up and I found in my Bible gateway this translation, and I agree with that 100%. It's, it comes from the complete Jewish Bible. I don't know who did the translation, but they did a good job. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. Dominion will rest on his shoulders. And he will be given the name Pele Yoetz. El Gebor. Now, they don't really tell you right here what it means, Peleoetz, but uh, later on they will repeat it. El Gebor, meaning the mighty God. Avi Ad. Sar Shalom. Which means Prince of Peace. So I have here between brackets, they tell you the exact literal translation, and I love it. Okay? See, the Hebrew doesn't say wonderful, comma, counselor, comma. It doesn't say that. It says this. Wonder of a counselor. That's the word Pele. Wonder or Pele means a miracle of a counselor. Pele. Pele. Okay? Wonder of a counselor. Mighty God. That's for sure. You can say amen to that. He's a mighty God. Who is a mighty God? Jesus is a mighty God. Amen? Unto us, a child is born, a son is given. His name is called Mighty God. Wonderful Counselor, or the literal translation, Wonder of a Counselor. Mighty God, and I like the next one because that's not really in the King James or any of the translations like Amplified and NIV and... They don't bring it out. But this uh, Jewish translation brings it out correctly. Father of eternity. Who is the father of eternity? Jesus. Who is the mighty God? Jesus. Okay? Father of eternity, Prince of Peace. Now God became flesh. 
It says in John chapter 1. And dwelt among us. Who did that? God. Don't look at me funny like uh, you never heard this before. God left heaven, left his glory, and came down and was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Ghost. That's the way it happened. It's explained in the scripture. Okay? And that's why Jesus could say, uh, the Father and I are one. Not one. You know, not this, but this. One. The Father and I are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Now we want to know the truth, right? So I'm here to tell you the truth. Uh, I tell you, the word Trinity uh, causes a lot of problems. That's why I never use it. Okay, and if somebody comes here and preaches and uses the word Trinity, I'm not going to cast stones on uh, at them. <laughs> it's not that big of an issue, but it is an issue to me when, when you're a theologian. Okay. So I'd rather use the word triunity. Okay. So God left his glory and became a man and provided himself as a lamb for a sacrifice. Because God couldn't find anybody else but himself. And so he was without spot, without blemish, without sin, sinless. And God only accepts a sinless sacrifice. Amen. Is that true? Yes. Now let me read you in Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Abraham was explaining to his poor son, well, good son, that was carrying the wood and the, and, and the matches. When he asked dad, he says, dad, we got the wood and we got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? Epho hase, where's the lamb? Epho means where, hase means lamb. Where's, where's the lamb? Okay, so Abraham answers his son. And let me tell you this, Abraham was not lying to his son. He was a prof Abraham was a prophet. When he spoke, he spoke prophetically. So we've got to understand what the word is saying. And Abraham said, Genesis 22, verse 8, My son, talking to Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Now, I looked it up in the Hebrew, because I, li I like to go back to the Hebrew language. What do you mean he'll provide himself? I want to know what the Hebrew says. Do you want to know what the Hebrew says? It says the verb is year A. Year A, lo. Yer elo. That's where we get the word gyra. I don't know how we get gyra out of yer e or yere. Yere means to see. God will see. The word, the verb is yere, meaning to see. God will see for himself, will provide himself. God will provide his own self, if I may put it this way. God will provide his own self to be the lamb. Abraham was prophesying. I, I think you should get excited. 
That's a revelation. God will provide himself a sacrifice and didn't God provide himself? Uh, see, Jesus is not just a man. He's a God man. So, I mean, uh, when Jesus arose from the dead, man, he overcame all of hell. He overcame every devil. He took away the authority that the devil had against us. He took the keys of hell and of death. And, and he... Uh, took the enemy and made a show of him openly, triumphing over the devil openly through the cross. God will provide himself. Or, if I put it this way, his self, his self. Himself, him, himself, he has provided as a sacrifice. No wonder John chapter 1 says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The same God whose Word became flesh. Now we're going too deep, but deep enough for you to understand and maybe grow in, in the ways of the Lord. So, <clears throat> his name is the mighty God. He's the mightiest force above all forces. That's Jesus. He's the lamb slain from before the foundations of the world. Who, he's the one who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. That's found in Revelation 1.8. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. That's Jesus, God, becoming flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God! was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, received up into glory. That's our God. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lanphier Road in Rome, Fridays at 730 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.